Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have called us through your Son, Jesus Christ, to make disciples of all nations. We ask for your guidance. Grant us opportunities to share your love, courage to speak your truth, and faithfulness to nurture your people. May we embody the teachings of Christ, walking in obedience and spreading your word. Strengthen our resolve to fulfill the Great Commission, knowing that you are with us always to the end of the age. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
The gospel reading is taken from Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 to 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of Christ. Good evening, brothers and sisters. This evening, we will focus on the topic of a call to discipleship. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, your word reminds us that your, the scripture is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And so, Heavenly Father, we open our hearts and our minds to hear from you so that we can go out and make disciples of all nations. Help us to have open minds when we hear your word. Help us to be humble so that we can receive your word in its fullness. And so place your servant behind the cross and decrease self while you increase that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. 
Brothers and sisters, a call to discipleship. Jesus was a rabbi and, of course, the most important peripatetic teacher and disciple maker in history. Wherever he walked, his students would follow. At the beginning of Jesus' public ministry, he chose particular individuals to be his disciples. They were recognized to memorize the teachings that he spoke as he walked. What's more, people didn't file an application to matriculate into the school of Jesus. Jesus selected his disciples. He went to prospective disciples where they were and gave this simple command. He said to them, follow me, follow me. Brothers and sisters, the command was literal. He called them to drop their present duties. They had to leave their work, their families, and their friends to follow Jesus. Yet. Jesus was more than just a peripatetic teacher. His disciples called him master. Their entire way of life changed because they followed Jesus, not merely as a great teacher, but as the Lord of all. That is the essence of discipleship, my friends. Being able to submit fully to the authority of Christ, the one whose lordship goes beyond just the classroom. Jesus' lordship encompasses all of life. The Greek philosophers learned from their teachers, but then tried to improve on that teaching. Christ's disciples have no such warrant. We are called to understand and teach only what God has revealed through Christ, including the Old Testament scriptures, for they point to Christ, and the New Testament scriptures, for they are the words of those whom Christ appointed to speak in his name. The Great Commission is the call of Christ for his disciples to extend his authority over the whole world. We are to share the gospel with everyone so that more and more people might call him master. This calling is not simply a call to evangelism. It isn't merely a call to get members for our churches. Rather, Christ calls us to make disciples. Disciples are people who have wholeheartedly committed to follow the thinking and conduct of the master. Such discipleship is a lifelong experience of learning the mind of Christ and following the will of Christ, being able to submit ourselves in full obedience to his lordship. Thus, when Jesus tells us to go to all nations, we are to go into the, all the world with his agenda and not our own. The Great Commission calls us, therefore, brothers and sisters, to work with other believers in the church in order to produce disciples and flood this world with knowledgeable, articulate Christians who worship God and follow Jesus Christ passionately. My friends, the greatest issue facing today's church is whether those who call themselves Christians are willing to live like disciples, shaped by his will, purpose, priorities, and kingdom, and transformed to radiate the life of Jesus. What does our call, what does our response to this call look like? Jesus is very clear. Discipleship is costly. Jesus sets the terms for aspiring disciples. He says to deny themselves, take up the cross, and follow him. Discipleship is all-consuming, requiring our absolute priority. You know, it is easy to be admirers, dazzled by Jesus' power. But he challenges us to move from being fans to followers, from spectators who sit on the sidelines to game changers in God's kingdom. He calls us into a deep relationship with him instead of staying on the fringes. In the New Testament times, disciples looked at and chose which rabbi they wanted to follow. Matthew chapter 8 verse 19 tells of a scribe, an expert in the Jewish scriptures, who was eager to offer his services to Jesus. Jesus' response is striking. He discourages him. 
Jesus, as an itinerant preacher, did not offer a settled life or an opportunity for status and fame. Instead, he offered a hard, challenging life where the objective was not personal fulfillment, but God's purposes. Jim Shaddix makes the observation. As you read the Gospels, you will notice that Jesus spent about the same time talking people out of following him as he did into following him. Jesus doesn't guarantee his followers a life of comfort. What he does guarantee is that he will walk with us through this journey. He wants neither shallow commitments nor lofty promises. The second would be disciple in verse 21 offered an excuse. Why no was not the same, was not the right time. Again, Jesus gets to the heart of the matter, insisting that now is the right time to follow, to focus on life that is eternal and to give up lesser loyalties. This doesn't mean we ignore responsibilities such as family and work. It means that we put Jesus above our family, our career, our hobbies, our finances, and the dreams and visions we have for our life. All our other obligations flow out of our obligation to serve Christ. Matthew, the writer of this gospel, is the role model for discipleship. He was a tax collector for the Romans, wealthy but despised, banished from the synagogues, socially grouped with sinners and prostitutes and outcasts. He knew the law and that his life did not honor God. Yet, Jesus looks at him and says, follow me. Matthew asked no questions. He gave up his profession, his wealth, his way of life and his sins. He understood both the offer and demand Jesus made. Jesus' demands are uncomfortable, my friends. We need to discard ego, give generously, love sacrificially, embrace hospitality, make constructive use of time. His offer is to help us with strength we may not have, giving us the Holy Spirit to empower and enable us with the resources we need. We are called, my brothers and sisters, to come and learn of Jesus. We are commanded to therefore go and make disciples of all nations. We do not have the choice of not making disciples, my friends. It is built into our Christian journey with Jesus. Learning, following, and making fishers of men. Amen.
you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.